Hello, my fun, fun friends. How is everybody doing today? Uh, I am well, thank you. My name is Amanda. This is the Amanda Made a Podcast. Um, this is just where I chat about my knitting, spinning, um, crochet, some weaving, some sewing, a lot of scouring wool, uh, because that has, as I have found, my heart's true passion. Um, there will also be some random dyeing stuff in there too, but whatever like my biggest uh my biggest things are you know the spinning the scouring knitting and crochet um and I am coming to you from Westerly Rhode Island where I live with my two children and my husband um yeah I'm a stay-at-home mom starting a wool scouring business called coastal wool washing um I'll link all that stuff below. You can find me on Instagram as Coastal Wool Washing. You can find me on Ravelry as Amanda Made It. And um, also Coastal Wool Washing on Facebook. But, you know. Does people really use Facebook anymore? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so that's me. And I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new or returning, um, it is really gratifying to have people want to hear me talk mostly about washing wool because <laughs> that's my uh my thing I guess um so I'm just gonna start off with my first finished object and this is my Miles shirt jacket here it will end I need to finish up with um my Miles shirt jacket by Ozetta uh it's Haley Smedley um it is knit out of uh Platulopi, uh, two strands held together. Um, this is like fantastic. This was so much fun to make. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the process. I loved working with the yarn. Um, and I'll stand up so you can see kind of, I mean, I'm kind of close to the camera. And so, but this is where it's at. It's got like a, not a split hem, but it's got a, you know, wavy hem thing going on. Um, I got these buttons from my local yarn shop, Driftwood Yarns. They, like, matched perfectly. Um, the only modifications I made for this is that I, uh, shortened it by two inches and I did not put the pockets on the front. Um, we had recently a cold snap here where it was like three degrees outside Fahrenheit and I was able to wear this over an alpaca sweater. I was full knitter that day. <laughs> like I think, I think I was wearing a made by me hand knit hat, cowl, sweater, jacket, mitts, and socks. <laughs> so that was um probably the most amount of my own knits I've been able to wear at once and I thoroughly enjoyed it and it was very warm and I uh it was a pleasure to wear them um and I'm down in my basement so which is usually chilly uh we live in it well it's a basement but it's not like creepy basement it's like you know split level raised ranch type of house um so it's a little bit chillier so this will keep me warm for the podcast um Another finished object. I actually have like two of these, but I made mitts from uh, by these are the world's simplest mitts mittens by Tin Can Knits. Uh, these are the ones I made for my younger daughter who is two. I did make an, a pair exactly the same for my six year old, but those ones are gross now and I'm not going to show those in public. She can just wear them to school and be hers with them. Um, my two-year-old just really like she'll wear them for a little bit and then she rips them off but uh, this is made from my hand spun this was made with uh, some lonk top and various things I had blended together and then I just I spun it just to, as a fun spin and my older daughter asked me to make mitts so I did and then I had enough to make a matching pair for my younger daughter so I did but you know they're super cute I'm just, I'm very pleased with how they came out and my older daughter wears them every day to and from school and she loves them. So I think that's, it's like the first thing I've made for her and I've made several things that she really actively likes and wants to wear. 
which is gratifying for any of you parents that make your kids things and they don't wear them. <laughs> um, so those are my finished objects. Like I have to, I have to recommend this because this, I have gotten so many compliments on it um, from people when they see me wearing it. It's so classic and simple and comfortable. Uh, so if you're in the market for something like this, I would totally recommend it. Um, but that's it for my FOs. I figure I'll move on to my works in progress or whips. Um, and then I'll go into my spinning stuff real quick. And it's not going to be a very long one today. It's, you know, just, just a quick pop in, show you what I'm doing, do a little stash update, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, let's move on to my works in progress. Um, I do have one work in progress that I did not bring to show, and that is the um, the swatch for my husband's uh, Gansey that I'm making. I have been working on it. It's upstairs. Um, it's also a very dark yarn and kind of going to be hard to see, I think, the textures. And I don't have that much done on it yet. Like, it's a lot of knitting <laughs> for a swatch. So um, I'll show that next time. But... For now, um, my first work in progress is a hat I'm making out of my hand spun. This was the Tour de Fleece colorway from Jillian Eve, uh, and I want to say it was on Polworth, I think. Um, and this is the panini beanie and i forgive me i do forget the uh the name of the designer but i will have all of the project stuff linked down below and names and designer names and stuff on the screen um i'm just really pleased with how this is working up it's a twisted rib brim and then a broken rib uh main body and it's just gonna be a slouchy comfy hat um i love the way that the colors are working up in this uh, this was probably one of my first, what felt to me, like truly successful spins in terms of consistency and, uh, you know, color management and stuff. So I'm just really pleased with this. Uh, and I like how it's looking on the screen too. <laughs> um, again, the Panini Beanie. Uh, it is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, but I don't know if it's available elsewhere. So uh, if it is, I will try to put the link for that down below. So if you have a problem with travel, you, you can access it. Um, so that's that. I think I've got another like three inches before I do the crown. This is a slouchy beanie. So I'm just excited for it. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully that should be done in the next couple weeks before the next episode. So my next work in progress is one I'm making for my mother. My mother cannot wear wool. She's way too itchy. Or she gets way too itchy. Um, alpaca doesn't work, uh, blends don't work. Like she cannot wear wool. Um, so I can't make her a lot of things. So when I was visiting her in Florida last month, two months ago, somewhere in December, uh, we went to a, a local yarn shop down there and she picked out a cotton silk blend, the Mirasol. Let me see. Yeah, Mirasol Organic Cotton Silk Mix, uh, the Winku base. It's... Um, 85% Kangui cotton and 15% silk. The yarn shop does have a sticker over the label, but I'll show you the back. Um, and it's this beautiful purple color. It is a thick and thin yarn. Originally, I was going to make a Tenya for my mom with it, but I didn't fully realize that it was a thick and thin uh, yarn, and I don't think that would have worked well for the Tenya. Plus, the Tenya is written for um fingering weight this is considered a worsted so I didn't mind doing the math or anything but with the lace bit at the bottom I don't know that it would have translated well with the uh thick and thin nature of this yarn so I did a search under this yarn on Ravelry to see what projects had been done and there was a sweater 
um, made with designed with this yarn called like think it's like the M85 Alma or something sweater again I'll have it like on the screen here or something um, but it is a top-down raglan deep V uh, oversized plenty of positive ease uh, sweater so I have pretty much just joined after the V so you work uh, flat from the cast on down to where you join after the V and then you continue working the raglans and then you split for sleeves and then you just knit the body. Um, I have just completed the first skein of yarn. I have three more left, which should be plenty for this. Uh, my mother is not a large woman. Um, I am knitting the second size of the sweater, which I think is a 37 inch bust, but that gives like good, no. The second size is is for a 37 inch bust, but it, it the ease is included or something. You know what I'm I think you know what I'm saying. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm just this is a this is a perfectly fun knit. Um, you can see the the thick and thin slubby nature of the yarn. You can also see that I'm rowing out a little bit, but this is not a smooth yarn, so I don't care. <laughs> I think it's gonna look fine. Um, and most people who aren't knitters aren't going to notice. So, and she's going to be down in Florida wearing this. So, anyway, super, this is the fun. I have not knit with a straight up uh, cotton, well, basically not a wool yarn in a very long time. So this is, or not a wool and not an acrylic. So this has been a fun little foray into something different. Um, in the Jillian Eve Discord, we are doing a uh spin along make along with plant fibers um and i did not spin this yarn but i i wanted to work with a plant fiber during this and i do plan on spinning a plant fiber but i just thought i would use this in that as well um so that is that the next work in progress i am super pleased with so i have as like everybody and their mother does at this point <laughs> a granny stripe blanket um the pattern is from attic 24 lucy of attic 24 it's a blog it's free um you know it's it's simple it's not hard uh but this is how it's coming along i am using mini skein sets from hue loco they had their um birthstone collection over 2021 I think and I had ordered the sets for you know my birth month my husband's birth month and our two girls birth months and uh I wanted to do an heirloom blanket of sorts with it and my first idea had been this this is no fun <laughs> this is not fun I did not enjoy working on this Join as you go, tiny little squares, using barely any of the colors. Like this was gonna take forever and not in a way that I was gonna enjoy. So I had to stop, you know, reassess, figure out what to do. I wanted something that was fun and enjoyable and relaxing to work on. So I stopped working on this and started doing this. So the, uh, the the, the grazy color is um, Cascade 220 Oatmeal, maybe. Uh, and then I have, I have four packs of 20 gram DK mini skeins. Um, I got a lot of yarn. I'm going to make this. It's, um, I think it's like 55 inches wide. And then I'm just going to you know, do a stripe, which is actually two rows um, of the color, which one one uh, mini skein does that. And then with a tiny bit left over, and then I do one row of the, the uh, oatmeal color, and which you can see in this. And then um, I'm just gonna keep going until all the minis are on. And it's a lot of fun. I'm also I'm making like the tiniest of tiny little magic knot balls with the little leftovers, which I'm finding fun. Um, Cause I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but it'll be fun. We'll see. 
So those are my whips that I'm actively working on. Um, like I said, I do have that Gamzee swatch upstairs and I will show that next time. Hopefully it'll be closer to completion next time. Uh, now for spinning stuff. Actually, no, let me, let me do a quick stash recap. Um, so for the month of January, I did end up using 10 skeins of yarn, but I added 12 skeins. So I had a net gain of two skeins of yarn. So these are the 12 skeins. I did mention these in the last episode. Sorry for the crinkling. Uh, these are the Sheep G's uh, stone washed. And there's three different colors in here. There's a garnet, there's something ruby, and there's whatever this tealy one is. Um, green agate. So uh, these I got to make a beach cover up for my mother-in-law and possibly for my girls if I have enough left over. So all in all, <laughs> I'm still plus two of uh, commercial yarns. Um, I also spun four skeins of yarn, but that's okay. I, I can't consider hand spun as part of this. All right, now on to the hand spinning part. Um, I have been sampling a bit of some of the fleeces that I have uh, that I washed, but I hadn't actually sampled yet. Or really, like I, this is my CVM Wensleydale from Cactus Hill Farms. This is freaking gorgeous. Yes, it's deep and it is dark and it is lustrous and it is so bouncy. And it is like, I combed this, and then, you know, one spun, I don't, whatever. I spun it. I didn't do a short forward for most of it. Um, but it is so, like, <sighs> this stuff is beautiful. And I do have some in my shop. Um, washed. That is uh, the only prep it has. It has been washed and that's it. There's still some VM in there. You still have to card it or comb it or whatever. This stuff is freaking phenomenal. And when I run out of what's in the shop, because I have a lot more than that, but I don't know if I'll put more in the shop because this stuff is so gorgeous. I want it for me. Um, so I don't think I'm going to get rid of that. Another one is my Icelandic lamb from Forest Grove Farms that I got through Melly Knits on Instagram, who I found through Tangles and Starlight, <laughs> Stitches and Starlight. Um, and this stuff I, I had spun a singles uh of it when i first got it and that's gorgeous but i really wanted to explore like what happened when i carded it and spun it and and did a two ply and this is again it's so wonderful this i do not have a lot of i sold uh the four ounces i had in my shop um I don't know if this will be going back in my shop because this is again something I may be keeping for myself. <laughs> if there is, if if I get to spending more and I'm like, okay, I can get part with some of this, then I will. But I don't know. This is pretty pretty special stuff here. Um, I also uh, have scoured up two East Frisian cross fleeces. So this is one. I have a client down in um, the Maryland, Delaware area who, she's a teacher. Hi, Burrito. We call her Burrito. Her gamer name is Electric Burrito, but we call her Burrito. Because um, her name is Amanda, too. <laughs> so it's very confusing. But um, so she is a teacher, and she has started a... Uh, really really wonderful fiber arts club in her school that the kids are interested in um she take take took them on a field trip to a, a festival uh she is also going to be taking them to a farm to visit the sheep and stuff and that farm has east frisian cross sheep that they were selling their fleeces and so um she asked me if i could scour one up for her and absolutely so 
I also got one too because I'm a sucker for a fleece. <laughs> um, and I scoured these up. Um, I have one that's drawing on the rack right now. This one I still need to pick for her. Still got a little bit of tippiness to it. I think that's called tippiness. I don't know. It's but it's it's deceptive. I was I lied to myself. I told myself that this was gonna be like more of an outerwear yarn. Because East Frisians fleece can can vary so much from animal to animal, um, let alone flock to flock. Uh and so that I I I I told myself and I told her that I thought it was going to be a bit of a, sorry, I'm looking for my little sample yarn that I made of this and I can't seem to find it. I made, uh, so I combed some up just to see what it was going to do. And then I spun it on my drop spindle and it was a tiny little sample and why can't I find it? Okay, well, I'll insert a picture here, somewhere, picture of the sample. And it's beautiful. I mean, is it going to be an extra skin for everyone? No, no, but it is a beautiful wool and I am pleased to have a chance to work with it. So I do have to pick this wool out for her a little bit um, with my picker and then send it on its way. Um, I also received two other fleeces. I got a, uh, Tunis fleece and, uh, Cheviot fleece, and they were both severely discounted and there was a reason for it and that's okay. <laughs> I got them knowing that they were severely discounted and that there were going to possibly be some issues. Now, one of the issues was with the tunis is there the yolk the yolk on it now i thought when i opened it, it was canary salmon um and i thought i got screwed uh but it turns out a friend of mine very tashi um very kindly gave me uh some references on the difference between yoking and canary staining and this is it was just yoking i'll show a picture here about how yellow it was um but after washing like it's still got a slightly buttery yellow color, but that's not bad. And it does, there's nothing wrong with the fleas. Um, this is definitely, it was a high, a, a decent amount of VM in the fleece for sure. Um, you know, this will be going up in my shop, uh, at some point. And it, this is for people who want to work and see what processing fleece is all about. And it's not going to be perfect. It's not a hand spinner's fleece. It wasn't intended to be a hand spinner's fleece. Um, but it's well worth the work because I have been combing some up and like, guys, like, it's just this creamy little poof of, here, let me, oh. tell me that isn't just like, oh man gorgeous so I just like you know if you look at this and you're like oh god and then you look at this it's like there is magic and you I when you see the picture of what this looked like before it, it's magic it is like freaking phenomenal um I have another fleece that I will show next time the cheviot that you know I got it as a 10 pound fleece but it was severely discounted because half of that weight was poop um, which is fine. Like, I knew that, you know, um, and it's, I still got the fleece at a great price and it, I scoured up a sample of it yesterday. It's still drying. That looks like it's going to be freaking gorgeous. So I'm not upset about it. Uh, but that is like what I've been working on. Um, I'm so excited. I have had a... I've had like a few orders from my shop on Etsy now, which is great. Uh, I have been in contact with a local shearer and shared my information for my wool washing services. Um, you know, I just, I can't, I don't know if I can fully express how, like this feels like it's, it, 
the right thing that I'm doing. Like this is, this is working, I think. <laughs> I hope. Small, slow, steady steps. Um, and feeling this connection with everything, like with the washing and the managing of fleece is, it's so gratifying. Um, I'm a member of the Jillian Eve Patreon and she has a video coming out soon that, but I got pre preview um, privileges for being a part of her uh, Patreon and she talks about what the point of spinning is for her and so much of what she says touches on how I feel and you know if you have any sort of inclination for spinning even knitting any any fiber work anything that connects you with uh some feeling of history and creativity um i think it's a, a very well worth it to watch that video um so anyway that's uh that's that uh that's kind of like shop updates um you know my kids are doing kid things um my daughter uh, is doing well with karate um, and my two-year-old is a two-year-old and all that that entails. Um, you know, I, I would love to know what you guys are doing, what you're making. Um, you know, it's shearing season in a lot of places. Uh, there is all kinds of stuff going on. Are you getting any exciting things? Are your flocks producing any exciting things? You know, um, it's lambing season too. So, uh, depending on where you are, um, what kind of babies do you have? <laughs> They're so adorable. Um, you know, what are your projects? What are you working on? I would love to hear, um, you know. I am loving scouring wool. Like, I just, I cannot express that appreciation enough. And um, if you love it too, I want to know what you love about it and what revs your engine <laughs> about it. Uh, and geek out with me because finding something like this and being able to geek out about it with people is like the bee's knees. <laughs> <laughs> if I may use that expression. Um, so anyway, that's my short little update. Uh, I will see you here again in a couple of weeks. I will have hopefully more exciting information I, about my shop. I will have some finished objects, I hope. And um, I'm looking forward to the rest of this year and I hope you are too. Uh, until I see you again, be safe, be happy. Uh, Enjoy your making and take care of each other. Bye.